Hello. Uh, first of all, thanks to Simon for inviting me, um, and also thanks to the other, the other presenters here. I mean, I was uh, during the break. Someone was saying that uh, a common theme here is is sadness. There, there's a lot of sadness in in these presentations, but there's also beauty in how the the artists are approaching the sadness. So thanks to the other uh, presenters. Um, so uh, I am a biologist. Um, I, I work for a group called the Wildlife Conservation Society. Half of what we do is New York City zoos. The other staff is in, other half is international conservation, and that's the part that, that I work for. Uh, we work in more than 60 countries in the world, and what we try to do is conduct scientific research to best inform the protection and management of wildlife. Um, so uh, I am a wildlife biologist and I, I work in, in remote areas. Um, I've captured tigers. Um, uh, this is a little messy. Um, I've, I've surveyed for salmon. I've weighed bears. Um, and my favorite, um, I've studied the, the world's largest owl. Uh, and people tend to get into my field to get away from people. Um, we're, we tend to be uh, so socially phobic and don't want to engage with, with people. Um, and so, um, it, it, um, but as I'm in these remote wild places, you know, there's people there, there's loggers, there's, there's hunters, there's fishermen, there's, there's reindeer herders. Uh, and so, um, it, uh, it took me a while to understand that the people who interact with the environment every day, I mean, the people who share space with wildlife, these are the people that we most need to reach when we're trying to do conservation work. I mean, people like me can sit in a place like New York and come up with the best possible ideas for how to protect wildlife, but if the people who live there don't feel safe with having things like tigers or bears sharing forest with them, they're gonna do what they can to get rid of them. They're gonna poison them, they're gonna, they're gonna shoot them, they're just gonna get rid of the threat. Um, and so I'm going to give a small example today um, about this um, using, using tigers. Um, I would say uh, a, a quarter of my pictures are not showing up here, so bear, do bear with me. Um, but so some, some background. Um, the, the red is where there are tigers now. Um, the orange is where they used to be. So 120 years ago, there were probably 100,000 tigers in the world. Um, now there's 3,500. Um, in, in Russia, where, where I work way up there, there are 500 to 550 tigers. Um, so this contraction of range and of tigers is because of us. It's loss of habitat and it's things like, like poaching. Um, and so um, about tw 20 years ago, um, some Russian conservationists decided to, I guess, bring conservation to the people. And they started this thing called Tiger Day. And it's become in, um, in the, the capital of, of Primoria, um, uh, Vladivostok, it's become a pretty popular event. I mean, you have, you know, my, my presentation also has, has parades. Um, there's uh, up to 20,000 people uh, take part in Tiger Day activities in, in Vladivostok, which is pretty amazing. So there's you know, a huge parade. Um, there are, um, um, you know, uh, school classes get involved, you know, kids paint their faces, they join these parades, they, they put on these skits. What impresses me about the Vladivostok Tiger Day event is that it's multi-generational. It's not just the kids getting engaged, it's, it's, uh, it, it's older folks too. Um, this couple here is reading an, a, a graphic about, um, uh, about tiger conservation. And so uh, the, the parade ends in, a, in this, this city square uh, where there are informational booths. So uh, nature reserves and, and environmental organizations have information about tigers and what they're doing to, to protect them. Um, and here, here's, um, and they have uh, games associated with it. So here there's, you know, several generations um, working together to see if they can pull as much as a tiger can, for, for example. Um, so, uh, if you remember just a, a few minutes ago, um, I said that, you know, we really need to engage local people in, in conservation activities. Now, um, you know, getting people on board for tiger conservation in Vladivostok is, it's great, but it's not incredibly impactful. I mean, that's like if everyone in New York City got on board with 
cougar conservation or, or wolf conservation. I mean, the, ch the odds of someone tomorrow running into a wolf is, is pretty low. Um, and just like people in Vladivostok, it's, it's more, it's an, uh, tigers are more of an abstract concept. So these are the folks we need to reach, right? The people who are walking the same rivers as, as tigers, um, sharing the same space with them. It's, it's the fishermen, um, it's, the, it's, it's the hunters, it's the people who spend time in the woods and uh, share resources with tigers. So um, look, um, my organization has a field office in a, in a county in, in this province. Um, and there are uh, 10 settlements in this county, um, about 10,000 people total, and it's about 10% of tiger habitat in Russia. So what's more important, to get 20,000 people to a day event in Vladivostok or focus on this, these 10,000 right here? Um, so the last few years, we've been replic trying to replicate the Tiger Day model and bring it to these, to these smaller villages where, I mean, tigers are not abstract. You know, tiger, uh, tigers um, um, walk through town, uh, bears walk through town. Uh, people um, encounter tigers berry picking, hunting, fishing. So it's, uh, the presence of tigers is very real for these people. So what we do is recruit children from some of the larger villages in the, in the county, um, help them put, put together performances, put together uh, plays, skits, come up with some games, and then we take them to some of these villages. Um, and so this, this place here, Ust uh, Sobolivka, um, are, some places are quite remote. Um, to get here from the main road, it's about 20 kilometers up a side road that takes almost three hours to drive. I mean, that's how poor the road is. You can almost walk that fast. Uh, so, it's, so when we come to a village like this, there is tremendous appreciation from the locals that we're spending our time to come and speak to them. So the kids we work with, put, they put on these plays. Um, they show the interconnectedness between humans and tigers and, and other, other wildlife. Um, and we also ask that the kids themselves from these villages put on, put on performances. Um, and some of them are pretty cute. Um, now, you know, speaking about uh, impact, so this picture here shows every single child in that village. So when we're in Vladivostok and we get, let's say, you know, 10,000, 15,000 kids uh, out of the 20,000 come to Tiger Day, that's a, a relatively small proportion of the overall number of children in Vladivostok. But here, we have everybody. So it's much, much, much more impactful. And we, um, you know, pepper in educational um, in information. We, uh, we give them information about, about tigers. Um, and so they're, so they're learning at the, at the same time. And it's, it is impactful. I mean, look at you know, that little boy's face up there. Uh, you know, I, I guarantee you that, that kid's gonna grow up to be a hunter, he's gonna grow up to be a fisherman. There's, in a place like Ust Sobolivka, there's, there's no other option. People basically don't leave, they stay, and they, and they live their lives. And that's who we wanna reach. You know, the, a speaker this morning has talked about uh, uh, targeting the, the climate, um, uh, climate change issue to children, we're trying to do the same thing. Like the, the adult hunters and fishermen, it's harder to change behavior of adults, but you can change the behavior of children, and this is, a, this is the way to do it. So in 15 years, 15, 20 years, when this, this boy um, is out hunting and fishing, or he looks outside his hunting cabin, and he sees a tiger. Or he's walking on a trail, and he sees a tiger. He has two options. He can, he can raise his gun, take the shot, maybe make some money off the skin, or if he feels that tigers are a threat to him because they're, they're eating the same deer that he's trying to feed his family with, um, you know, maybe he shoots them. Or he stands back, uh, looks at this uh, beautiful creature, and, and lets it pass. So that's what we're trying to do, is, is, uh, is instill a conservation ethic in the youth of, um, of tiger habitat, and I think that this this style of, of performance, performance art, is a is a means to to do that. That's it. Thank you.